beat up the real deal now. Gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 33 of the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Polls, hosted by our very own Corporate Cappy and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live right here on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after we are done recording it, it is posted for your listening enjoyment in full on Spreaker itself, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. So go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you'd like to join in the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read on the podcast, tweet us on the Holds Bar WP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. We will try to get to them as best as we can. I am your host. The self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'm always continuing to be joined by my co-host, Mr. Corporate himself, the blissful boss, Corporate Cappy. I'm back. He's back. Well, missed the review, but you missed the review. Wow, shocker. Sorry. I mean, it was just a, I was so sad without you. Oh, I, sounded like it. I was I was dying inside. You could hear in the review. I could slowly. When I announced that you weren't going to be doing a review with me, I was... It was bad for your personal I, I, health. It was really bad for my personal health. A tear shed. Okay, anyways. actually you didn't, but anyways. <laughs> what a week! It's been in the WWE. Especially for us, too. To say the least, yep. Coming off Tired a huge out. weekend. Oh, man. I was <laughs> so, so exhausted going to bed Sunday night. And then when I woke up Monday morning, I was just like, holy crap. You, I'm like, could I, I don't think I could have done Raw this week we we drove up to toronto twice we had a lot of mileage in two days yeah plus the trains yeah we took the subway to that korean grill house if you, as you see in our vlog fucking phenomenal food yeah i never had that before that was like the best thing i've ever had Shout out store boy cascade sense for uh, showing us that yeah it was so good um as we said in the video it was a perfect 10 yeah but i was just exhausted it's just a lot of a lot of walking around yeah. <laughs> i don't want to sound lazy but jesus christ man i just it takes a toll on you because we got to take the the train from toronto to burlington and we got to drive home from from burlington which takes like 45 minutes depending on traffic so like it's and then a, we had to do it all over again for sunday it was just yeah it was a long weekend but it was it was well worth so it. worth it that was amazing the huge shocker at the inner survivor series but we later found out we know why and it kind of makes up for it now that Goldberg's in the Royal Rumble and he's going to have a future match after that. So we'll get into that in the review. But yeah, it's been a another roller coaster of a week here in the WWE. Uh, coming off a big pay-per-view. Yeah. And you know what it sucks? I for, totally forgot. Like I, I, I tuned in to watch NXT last night and I'm like, oh yeah, shit. It's the matches I just seen at TakeOver because I watched the taping yeah, we at TakeOver. We, we saw a taping of NXT. I was sitting there going, what the hell? Why aren't they showing anything? I'm like, oh yeah, because they taped everything at TakeOver. They didn't even announce that it, they were doing an NXT That episode. woman's match was the main yeah. event. I'm like, holy shit, NXT. <laughs> I didn't even like acknowledge that it was a woman main eventing a show. They didn't even say that it was an NXT taping. No. Like, they just I thought it was just dark matches. But. And I was watching it last night and they are announcing matches for the next week and they're like from ottawa so i'm like okay so it's this week so again i, I keep forgetting that nxt is taped week a week prior so ottawa got a good show i, I saw the matches that they're going to get i ottawa got a good show they got to see smackdown which was we'll get into that in my review and then <laughs> they got the nxt taping right after they, it was awesome. after i think it was after or before i don't even know i gotta check that out but anyways wwe i mean they had a successful Canadian tour, so hopefully they come back. I really hope they come back. They need to come back to Toronto. That'd be great. I had so much fun. The crowd was so into it. If we didn't know how over Ty Dillinger was until now, then, yeah. you know, WWE needs to wake the fuck up. They see how good Toronto, uh, how good of a crowd Toronto is, so. It was incredible. It was nuts. It was such a good weekend. We are getting a Hamilton live event coming Ooh, up. Ooh, Smackdown. Smackdown. Woo! And then Buffalo gets a Raw one in March with headline by Brock Raw. Lesnar. Squash Lesnar. Squ- is that what we're going to call him? Squash Lesnar? <laughs> either squashes somebody or gets squashed. Yeah. There's no in between with that guy. But before I get anything, let's announce some podcast news. Guys, I don't know if you've seen before, but the last two years we've done our own slammies. 
Uh, last year we had way more wars than we had the year before. And, and this, this year we're just going to have more. just as much. <laughs> I think we've added like two or three. Yep. <laughs> but if you haven't seen, go check us out. It, go check it out. It's in the, on YouTube, our uh, previous recorded. So it was last year on the summer times. So go check it out. If you don't know what it's all about, we do our own slammies. Not affiliated with WWE's nominations whatsoever. Yep, it has nothing to do with them. It's our own opinions and our own nominations and our own winners. So it's gonna be a big show this year. Yep. pun intended. <laughs> Actually, he's not, wow. even, he's not even nominated for anything this he year. He can be nominated for "Where the Fuck Are You" of the year. <laughs> um, but yeah, it'll it'll just like give you an update, guys. It will be sometime after TLC. Because we're gonna wait till TLC. Because you know something could happen at TLC. Yeah, like the ma- the move of the year last year wasn't until. I mean, we could even say we had to wait till Roadblock, but then we're getting into Christmas holidays and we can't really record then. So yeah, the match of the year happened at TLC last year with Kalisto with the Sleeta Delta exactly. off the ladder. So, so we don't want to miss anything. I don't know. So stay tuned for that. Other than that, let's get into the show. I want to start off with your tweets out there. Before that. I want to I want to announce something. You got to make something clear here. Make something clear. I don't want to single anyone out. But guys, I know we have the limit of five tweets per per review. So you have five tweets for Raw and you have five tweets for SmackDown. Keep the questions to a minimum to at least three <laughs> questions. I can't read nine questions. I know you know who you are out there. I don't. I don't. We don't have time for nine questions. Like we're already six minutes into the show. Okay. If I read all your questions and discussed every single one of them, this the show would be forty five minutes of questions. And then we'd have to have another hour of... Rev- no, it'd be way too goddamn long. We appreciate your enthusiasm for the podcast. Yeah, and, and your love but... for the podcast. But come, tone it down a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> just three. Three questions. You can have your five tweets, but just three questions. And we'll get to them as possible. I might even just scrap the question thing and just... I might put out a question and you guys answer my question. But then I want only three responses. I don't want 800 responses. Guys, we appreciate the love for the podcast. Trust me. We love it. Um, we went from nothing to this now. And we, we, you have no idea what it means to us. Just keep it down. <laughs> it's unless, all, unless you want the show to be eight hours line. long. Yeah, unless you want to sit there for eight hours and listen to us discuss. I mean, if you do, whatever. But I'm not, I don't have the voice to carry on for eight hours. Nope. So just keep it down. All right. So raw tweets. We'll get into them. First couple come from Gamma and you one who is now named Cullen on Twitter. Uh, repackaged. So he's repackaged. I think that's his real name. Cullen. Thank you, Cullen. He put, love the main event. Oops, I just botched. Okay, here we go. Love the main event, and I enjoyed the full show again. I'll give it 8 out of 10 again this week. Only thing I didn't care for was Sammy getting killed by Braun. 100% agree with him on that. <laughs> um, next head tweet comes from Glorious Greg at Gilly929 on Twitter. He puts pros, great main event. New Day was entertaining as usual. The backstage segment with Enzo was pretty funny. Con, Sami Zayn gets fed to Braun Strowman and Golden Truth almost beats Gallows and Anderson. <laughs> oh, I would have had a lot of rant about if that ever actually happened. Um, he puts, I give Raw this week 7 out of 10. My rating would have been 8 had Sami Zayn not been fed to Strowman. Also, I can't wait to see Goldberg in the Royal Rumble match. Yes, I would have to agree with you there, Craig, 100%. Next set of tweets comes from the every week changing picture irrelevance at Forlorn. He puts, so this Raw wasn't bad. It was solid. Goldberg, Jericho being Jericho. Uh, the CW's funny little segment. I'm guessing he's calling the cruiserweights. The funny little segment in the main event. But you also have to stale ass. You also have to stale ass New Day. He thinks New Day is stale as hell. I tend to disagree with you, Forlorn. I think they're still good, but I did not like the heel tactic they did this week. As he puts faces, but use heel tactics to win a title match. Sasha and Charlotte for the 80th time. <laughs> Sammy, get, Sammy getting fed to Braun, which is creating a new beast, but destroying a shining star in Sami Zayn. A shining star, right? Eh? Oh, don't even. Raw was solid, not bad. Uh, amazing main event with bad ending. Jericho made up for it with that Sin Cara mask attack, but it, <laughs> but it masked Owens less as a champ. Mm. The Shinsuke uh, sweater. <laughs> yeah. So as he as he's changing pictures, this is the reason he put. So for now, I decide to take pictures from Raw stars and make them my avatar. So his <laughs> his Twitter picture tonight's is Braun. Doesn't he look? <laughs> doesn't that look like his best? Well, that's the Braun picture I'm showing you right now. Wow. <laughs> It's a nice mug. <laughs> no. 
He puts Raw gets a 6 out of 10, not a 7 because of the stale last New Day, and not an 8, knowing that next week it's Sasha versus Charlotte for the 900th time. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I agree with him there. I think we've seen too much of that. Hopefully this is the last time for a while. I think we should see it again. I can't agree. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, next set, next tweet comes from Tony Mercer at Recrem Why Not on Twitter. He puts, can't give a fair rating because I fell asleep before the main event. <laughs> As it stands, Raw was typical Raw, nothing special. You know what? I can't blame him for falling asleep, man. This that middle gap of Raw is always nap boring. Time. It, it literally is nap time. Uh, next tweet comes from Casey Salvis. I saw it was 94 on Twitter. Commentary for the Cruiserweights is horrible. Sounds like they don't care about the Cruiserweights. Should be on SmackDown. Four out of ten for That's Raw That's just this typical week. Raw commentary, though. They don't really talk about the actual moves. No. No. They're they're more like promoting something yeah. else. Or if Natty's on commentary, she can talk about fucking two paws all the time. Well, that's SmackDown. But or they're just talking still, about like before. stories, not about yeah. the actual Storytelling moves. instead of, yeah. you know, commentary like Mar Ronaldo. God, and it's almost like when I mean I'm, I'm listening to SmackDown. It's almost like they're pressuring Ronaldo into storytelling. He just like gives like a one word answer. That's and why they nothing. added Tom Phillips? I don't know. Yeah. Last set of raw tweets. You know what time it is? You, you love so good to me. That's right. It comes from at Real Michael Chow on Twitter with his glorious entrance theme. Of Rico. Or Billy and Chuck, as he likes to say. Or Billy and Chuck. So, his tweets for Raw this week. Okay, post pay per view Raw, 7 out of 10. I thought they failed to expand on Raw's men's team losing and Stephanie only punishing Sammy as a result. Pros, Goldberg enters the best of last series. <laughs> Rusev wins and he did tech Enzo that. Teach Enzo that. Oh, he did teach Enzo that. Oh my god, I botch hard. Dana botch. Yeah. I'm about to botch right now. I think I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> oh, god, that's bad. <laughs> I think that's the first time I ever sneezed on the podcast. Nope. <laughs> Get it over with me. All right. He puts Jericho uses a Sin Cara mask. Rub it in, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that, that was ironic in. as hell. Khan's hashtag heel fully punishes Sammy, then regrets his loser decision. Emma wins longest debut award, beating out Eva Marie and Kurt Hawkins. <laughs> uh, yeah, so when true. the hell is she going to debut? Just keep saying coming soon. Yeah, it's the longest like premiere ever. Um, question for Matt Real Michael Chow. Do you think Goldberg will win the Royal Rumble in 90, setting, 90 seconds? Just kidding. Next question is a real question. <laughs> <laughs> he puts deja vu do you think lesnar will screw over goldberg and rumble again yes 100 percent. i do yes we think you know I, I have an interesting prediction for that i think they're gonna well i think brock lesnar is gonna be in the royal rumble i think they're gonna I, I, and i they think goldberg's gonna like, eliminate him like really fast so like it's gonna show his dominance again brock lesnar's gonna be so pissed goldberg's gonna be turned around he's gonna go back in the ring and then throw goldberg over the top rope screwing him and i think they'd be smart enough to not like lesnar doesn't even appear until the royal rumble yeah like don't even have him like appear on tv no. don't have well him talk about that's him. tough because he's facing rusev at a live event in december <laughs> other than that he has no other well, schedule at least it's appearance. a live event and it's not yeah. televised after that he has no off tv yeah he's got no schedule appearances keep him off that. tv and have like the surprise factor of him coming out and just fucking over goldberg yeah i can agree with that so let's get into the SmackDown tweets. And we'll start with Casey Salvis at Salvis94. Too much James Ellsworth. He has no business in the main event picture. Two out of ten. That is a low rate. Um, our boy JD from NY pointed this out on his review saying that James Ellsworth has had more main event matches on the main roster than both Sami Zayn and Bray Wyatt combined. That is fucking sad. <laughs> That is, oh god, we'll get into that in my SmackDown review. That is fucking sad. So, call it at Game Menu. One puts, I seriously don't know how to feel about tonight's episode. I thought it was all right, but I want to like it more. I'll give it eight for Dean Ambrose. So, I guess Raw and SmackDown tied for this week for me. But if you take Dean Ambrose out, I would give it a six. Dean was pretty entertaining this week. Mm, I, got I wouldn't give that. it an eight, though. I wouldn't. No, uh, that's a little high there. I, I mean, man. I'm a blue Call brand him. guy, but no way. It's a little that high. high. This week. Uh, Glorious Greg puts uh, 
what do you guys think WWE should do with Ellsworth? Also, who do you feel should be the team to beat Rhino and Slater? Well, American Alpha is going to be the future of the division, but I don't think they're going to win it from them first. No, it'll probably be the Wyatts. I could see and Ray, an Ray Alpha Ray and Wyatt feud starts after that. Uh, I could even see the Usos, even though they lost. But yeah. Um, and what was his first question? Ask for Ellsworth, what they should do with him. Put him uh, in the mid fucking card. mid card. Yeah, and stick Not, him there. <laughs> get him the hell out of the main event picture. Yeah. Should Bray and Randy Orton or Harper give it be given a chance to win the tag titles? I think yes. I think well, that I could think definitely boost hard. their Wyatt family up. Are they going to do like the New Day if they win it and just revolve? Um, you know, I think so. Uh, it probably could be something like that. Or Randy. It's always going to be Randy and Harper and Bray Wyatt. It's going to be the, you know. But the, apparently the next Xavier week Woods. it's Bray and Randy that are wrestling. Oh. If Bray said he's wrestling. Then I might do a New Day thing. Yeah. I can see it. Who do you think SmackDown should, or what do you think SmackDown should do with Apollo Crews? Get him in a fucking relevant feud. Yeah, you can't trade him because he's just going to get buried on Raw too. He's getting buried on both shows. Put him in a feud and have him stop smiling. I think you should face. go heel. Get him to stop smiling. Get a, get him a manager that can talk for him. Yeah. And have him as like, you know, the, this big dominant figure. I think he'd be a good Paul Heyman guy. But he's on <laughs> I know. Smackdown. It sucks. Get him some kind of manager. <laughs> yeah. Greg, put, also, what theme song would you guys give me? Just like you gave Michael Chow an awesome theme. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> my app right here can only hold so many songs so if if you guys get mad that you don't have your own theme song I might just cut Michael Chow I think he can I think Michael Chow could live with not there's only one number song. one fan we can't be like WWE and have like eight, yeah, thing, eight and it's tough I can champions. the list here I can only fit so many songs we have our breaking news theme Sunday Night Heat all that stuff I can't really have any more on here so I'm sorry but if I were to give you a song Greg <sighs> hmm We'll have to think about that. I'll give you Gregory Helms' theme. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be your perfect just theme. Just don't play his tight Gregory Helms. Just, I, dun, just, dun, I love the theme. Just dun, don't, dun, don't dun, show dun, his dun. glasses Titan Tron. That's, that's <laughs> terrible. Uh, all right. So, forlorn for SmackDown tweets. So, today I didn't find any pictures to add to my profile pic. But to be honest, I didn't feel all that great about SmackDown. Ellsworth on TV for the sixth week in a row. Just my joy for Ellsworth is, an, is equal to my joy for New Day. It's non-existent. <laughs> God. None of these matches were great. The tag teams, I was mad. Poor Brazongo. But we get uh, American Alpha versus Bray and Orton, so that's great. But it's obvious Orton and Bray will win because one team is heel and the other is face, as in he- Heath and Rhino. Uh, American Alpha with nothing to do dean carried the show five out of ten i just want corbin to end of days the shit out of ellsworth <laughs> uh, just like i want the revival to give new day a shatter machine but then the revival will be on raw god i just i just want to go to bed <laughs> wow <sighs> a lot of thoughts there from forlorn mm-hmm. so next set of smackdown means comes from michael chow oh, four to ten he puts for smackdown <laughs> Such bad booking lately. Why are the sole survivors of SmackDown men seem going for the tag titles instead of the world title? Mm, yeah, I know. I, mean, I know you see like Bray should be going for the world title and then SmackDown as it should be just Ray and or uh, Ray. It should be just Randy and Luke Harper. It's so confusing this new Wyatt family, man, because just Randy Orton be, is so out of place, it confuses the fuck out of me looking at them as the Wyatt family. <laughs> but it also doesn't make sense to have Bray face Styles because they're both heel. Yeah, that's tough. Probably can't do that right now. Um, Michael Childs puts pros, Alexa stirs Becky a slice of DDT pizza. Mm. Bree's sister and Big Cass's girlfriend no DQ at TLC. <laughs> <laughs> and give and hashtag give Baron Corbin a chance. Yes, I love it. Con repeated fuse lives on. Bray and Orton become the Sheamus and Cesaro with SmackDown. And James Ellsworth, James Ellsworth, hashtag stop Ellsworth. <laughs> <laughs> or James Ellis. Ellis. <laughs> Question: What is your fave? Well, who is your fave to win the Royal Rumble? And your most hated Rumble, your and your most hated. Okay, who's your fave Rumble winner, and who's your most hated Rumble winner? His fave is The Rock. His most hated Vinnie Mac. Uh, God, I remember when Vince I, McMahon. Won. I wasn't watching when Vince won, so I can't really comment on that. Um, My favorite Rumble winner, and I've said this in the Royal Rumble Sunday Night Heat, and this is before his personal life stepped in. 
my favorite Rumble, Rumble win was Chris Benoit. Just the way that he won it. The way that he won it, and no one expected him to beat Shawn Michaels and Triple H at that time. He was like the ultimate underdog going into that match. He was. Wasn't he number two? Yeah. I think he was like some really early in that Royal Rumble. But like going to WrestleMania, people were like, okay, it's not going to be Chris Benoit. It's either going to be Michaels or Triple H. Um, the worst was definitely Batista the second time. Yeah, 100%. That was really bad. Is that the one that they, when Brian got eliminated, the fans just booed from yeah. like the rest no, of the Brian show? No, Brian wasn't even in it. Oh. Remember Batista was number 30 when he oh, came okay. back? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the worst one. Yeah, and the best, I do like the Rock with the Big Show one. That was pretty good. Um, can't really think of any other ones off the top of my head right now. Maybe Edge. Yeah. I think Edge. Yeah, Edge was a good one, too. I think Edge was that was, good. like, the, the surprise, it was, huge it was surprise. a surprise return. He knocked out Jericho yeah. to win it. It was his tag yeah. partner. Yeah. yeah. So. I think, uh, yeah, okay, I can read that. But mine would still be Chris Benoit, just because of the surprise, well, I guess not surprise factor, the underdog factor. And then he went on to win the title. Yeah. Um, last set tweet, or last tweet comes from Hootran, at Hootran Superman on Twitter. Raw was more of the same... From what I remember, nothing great, but didn't shit the bed. Kind of, kind of a holding pattern. <laughs> <laughs> if Raw doesn't shit the bed, it's a decent. It's like a success. Yeah. So point. a lot of tweets this week. A lot of questions. Thank you as always, ladies and gentlemen. So we're getting on the second part of the show, and that is hosted by our very own corporate Cappy, and that is the Luke Gallows polls. <laughs> That's right. Welcome to the Luke Gallows Polls, ladies and gentlemen, hosted by our very own Corvo Cappy. It is where we read polls off our boys' fun WWE polls on Twitter. Go check them out at Fun WWE Polls. They do some great polls, some funny polls, all polls for your liking. So go check them out and interact with them. So, Corporate Cappy, take it away. We're going to start off with one poll from the weekend. We won't go over the, all of them, but which one of these events was better? the better show of the weekend, NXT TakeOver or Survivor Series? TakeOver. Take over, but surprisingly, only fifty four percent to forty six. I think that's just. I think that that poll was like the initial surprise factor of the ending of Survivor Series, and the men's match was just like a really good match too. But I, from start to finish, Takeover was a better better show, hundred oh, yeah. percent. And those are probably some casuals in there that probably didn't even watch Takeover. Yep. Um, will the Undertaker get another run with the WWE World Championship? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. That'll be very short. Fifty two percent. Yes. Yeah. 48 said no. Wow. It's tough. It's tough. It, it, it all depends on how good his hip is right now. I would I would like it to be a retirement match. Like he wins it and then retires. Yeah. And not have to defend it. Or he it wins or... it, doesn't defend it till WrestleMania, and then we all know who it's going to be. And his name is John Cena. And he becomes the 16-time champion he always wants to be. And I can see that happening. For it. like, it's like storybook ending. You know? I'd be, surprisingly, I'd be okay with that. Better than Brock Lesnar. I just hope they would they would be good enough to be a good match. I think they would. I think Cena would make them look good too. Yeah. Um, if Goldberg wrestles at WrestleMania, then who should his opponent be? Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker, Roman Reigns, or Kevin Owens? It's going to be Brock Lesnar. I can't. I as much as I'd want to see maybe Roman Reigns or Kevin Owens, it's going to be Brock Lesnar. Thirty five percent said The Undertaker. No. It's not going to be The Undertaker. You guys are so delusional. Fuck. Second was Roman Reigns. Freaking Brock Lesnar was third in that poll. Wow. I have nothing to say about that. Do you think it would have been better for a full-time superstar to defeat Brock Lesnar instead of Goldberg? Yes or no? I'd say no because they don't have somebody as dominant as Brock Lesnar right now. Yeah. He's just buried everybody yeah. that no one even looks on the same level as him right yeah, now. Yeah, I'd say no as well. And that's also like fault of WWE because they're not pushing their own talent. They're not making their own bright stars. They're they're relying on bringing old part timers yeah, back. That's all Vince McMahon. All Vince, man. Instead of building, can't your, let go of that path. Like, why don't you try and build your own stars into that? Like, yeah, you're never going to have those stars if you don't start now. <laughs> you can't, there's not going to be. You can't keep going back to the well for these old guys. Yeah. There's not going to be any left. Exactly. Um, will Goldberg win the Royal Rumble? Yes or no? No. 
No, 63%. Of that should be higher. Not He's not winning. <laughs> He's not going to win the Rumble. Guys are so, again, delusional. Isn't Vince McMahon trying to get this poll? <laughs> this is what oh Vince God. wants you guys to think. Th- yeah. th- this is the, These are the suckers right here that yeah. Vince wants to bring in the money from right here. It's retarded, and, I, and we don't see it. We're not on that side. We see through the bullshit, Vince. <laughs> Uh, what was your opinion of Chris Jericho's highlight reel with Kevin Owens this week? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Thumbs up, 83%. That should be 100. That was like the greatest segment I've ever seen. <laughs> we'll get into that in the Raw review. Which one of these uh, teams wins the tag titles match next week? New Day or Gallows and Anderson? New Day. 16%. They're going to make New Day the longest reigning champions. They, they're going to do it either by cheating. We'll get into that in the Raw review and my opinions on that. They're, they're going to be longest reigning champions. It's going to happen. Uh, which one of these superstars wins the women's title match next week on Raw? Charlotte or Sasha Banks? Charlotte. Charlotte only won by 52%. If you guys really think that, like, coming from, like, the biggest Sasha fan out there, if you think that she's winning the title That's again, overkill if she wins again, man. Like that's You just, want the title to look that crap? God. Ugh. Charlotte's going to hold on to it till Mania and Bailey's going to win it for her. That's, I'm calling it right now. Because they're, they're going to they're gonna build this Charlotte... Being no. undefeated at a pay per view thing all the way to WrestleMania, and then they're going to crown Bailey. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, next, according to the Twitter fans, because this isn't us, what was your opinion of this week's episode of Raw? Great, above average, average, or terrible? Average. They voted above average. Why? Because oh, I think it's because SmackDown sucked this week. I think it's because Raw's just usually bad, so that they had a mediocre show, so it looked better than what it usually is. Yeah, well, it didn't help that SmackDown was shit this week. Uh, n- going into the next poll, what was your opinion of SmackDown this week? 41% said great. That one. What? Sh- you guys all must be Ellsworth fans. 100%. Y'all must just like Ambrose and Ellsworth, and that's it. Only 8% said terrible. You guys are fucking delusional. I don't even care. And I'll get all the heat that I want. I, you guys are all fucking delusional. And last tweet, which of the programs was better this week, Raw or SmackDown from them? Raw. SmackDown, 61%. Wait, what? <laughs> I think these are Raw haters. Are you kidding me? I think this. How is like- did SmackDown win this week? I want to know. You fucking people have voted for SmackDown. I want to know right now why you thought it, it was better, because it wasn't. Surprisingly, SmackDown was shit this week. For the first time in a long time. It was garbage. 61%. Unbelievable. I think they're just raw haters. That was fucking pathetic. <laughs> I don't know what show. I'm disappointed in the voters on the yeah, Fund Me too. Polls this I, I can't even tell you. No, I can't. I have, I'm done talking about it. I'm done. I'm done. Done like Braun Strowman. I'm done. Kyle Masters done moment of the week. Yeah. So, we're getting to the reviews. We'll start off with uh, Monday Night Raw, which was the better show this week. But, as always, Raw is now back after Survivor Series to status quo Raw. Same shit, different episode. Still feels way too fucking long, especially in the middle of the show. Feels like the middle of the show just like is longer than the beginning or the end. It just drags, and you're like, oh, for fuck's sakes, when's the main event? I wish I could just skip to the main event. Yep. Best part was the main event this week and the highlight reel. Uh, Raw needs to go to two hours, I think. Seriously, it, it get this, just sacrifice it, Vince. Have the third hour just be Raw talk like they do with Talking Smack. Like, look at how, if you look at the ratings, how bad the middle of the show is. Just, you have too much time for the con, oh, you have too, oh, too much time for the content that you want to produce. And the content they're producing isn't even worth that it's extra hour. not even good. Hour. No, it's not. If, now I can the understand. are moving. But it just I sucks. could understand if he was producing really good television that he needed that third hour, but it most of it's just garbage. Now it just drags, and you're like, for fuck's sake, there's too many commercials and oh my god, the, too commer- many the commercials during the matches have to stop. Yeah, like unless it's like a half an hour match, they shouldn't be having a commercial for a fucking ten minute match. Yeah, because you come back and you see a minute of the wrestling match. That's, it's like watching a highlight video. That's on not YouTube. just Raw too. SmackDown's bad for that too. Yeah. So we open the show up with Goldberg. We get a recap um, about what happened at Survivor Series. Goldberg thanks the fans and his family. Says Stephanie ran to him backstage and asked if he wanted another title run. If he had another title run in him. He had one last title run in me. Goldberg says basically he's going to... He says yes, and he'll be into... Going to do it the right way, basically. And he'll be in the Royal Rumble match. But, you know, you're not going to win, Goldberg. (laughs) There's no way in hell they make Goldberg win the Royal Rumble. If they do, I'm done. 
I'm I'm seriously fucking done Another and go with your rumble, man. I'll be so pissed off. So I don't think he'll win. Brock's obviously gonna get involved. That's like a for sure thing. Um Will Brock show up before the Rumble? No. I know we don't want him to, but do you think he will? No. I hope not. Oh, smart idea not to. Um Where will Goldberg enter in the Royal Rumble? Probably in the mid twenties. You know what? I'm telling you right now, I think he's going to be either one or two. I don't think he can go that long. Because of the whole entrance thing. I think he's going to be one or two. And I think he's going to put himself there. And they're going to have to send like eight jobbers in the first eight after him. For him to just literally just throw over the top rope really quickly. So they want to make him look strong by eliminating a lot of people. And maybe like at eight, they send in three members of a team like the New Day. Or they send two members of the club. They're beating down on Goldberg, and then more people come out, and Goldberg just you know has like a rest spot in the corner. Then finally Brock Lesnar enters, and then they do their spot there. But I honestly think Goldberg's going to be one or two. That makes more sense, I guess. I don't think Goldberg's going to enter that late. I think Lesnar will be after Goldberg. Yeah, but we got to remember too. This is in the Alamo Dome. This is a huge fucking arena. This is going to be a big Royal Rumble this year. I so, wonder if they're going to make it forty man. That's going to be interesting too. We all know who won the first forty man. See, see, see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so move on. New Day versus Cesaro and Sheamus for the tag team titles. God. Stephen Foley rewarded Cesaro and Sheamus with the title shot. Not being the sole survivors last night. Yep. Um, right. But hold up, hold up. How does this make sense in a way? Rollins loses. He gets rewarded the title shot. Zane loses. Zane loses. He gets fed to Braun Strowman. <laughs> More inconsistency from Foley and Steph. This is why Michael Chow hates Foley. And we get the hashtag heel Foley all the time. Right here. This fucking makes no sense. Storyline or not, this is stupid. This makes they, They're making themselves look stupid. And then even worse, how does Golden Truth get a number one contender spot? And Sami Zayn doesn't even lose the match. He got fucking screwed. <laughs> and they still feed him the Braun Strowman. They're like, oh, we're punishing you. No, that makes it. But then, <laughs> I don't fucking get it. Rollins loses, but he gets fucking instant title match at the end of the show. No DQ, and everyone banned from ringside. Regardless if he got screwed or not, he got a title match for losing. Makes no sense. Anyway, the New Day cut a promo about being the longest reigning champs. In 23 days, it'll be the longest reigning champs. They mention uh, demolition. They're like, they're, we're going to demolish their record. God. Wow. So, um, into the match it was really good. Cesaro looked unreal, as always. Guy's just, just oozing with talent. <laughs> just in, insane. New Day wins with a distraction. Xavier Woods comes on the apron with Francesca. Yeah. And then basically turns into a roll up. So, the New Day, who are the faces here, ladies and gentlemen. It's tough to say that Cesaro and Sheamus are the heels because one's face and one's heel. But the New Day win with a heel tactic when they're clearly the baby faces. But they've always been like a tweener team, though. But they're baby faces. They don't get booed. This just doesn't make sense. They haven't won by cheating in a long time. Maybe they're tur- maybe they're turning them heel. I don't get it. I fuck it. This made no sense. Either to me. way, I'm I'm starting to go down, go off the new day train, man. They're I'm, they're starting to piss me off. That that was stupid. I don't know why they made him lo- win that way. Why didn't just make them win clean? What if she- Sheamus fucked over Cesaro like he's always been doing? Where's the deception? They still they're still pissed at each other. They still try to get the crowd reaction. They're not friends. Why is there no deception? Why did they have the new day win with a heel tactic? Didn't make any fucking sense to me. I, I, it was the worst part. That was probably the worst part of Raw. I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? I have nothing else to add. To How that. can you have New Day be a credible tag team champion winning like that? They win all the time dirty. I don't think they win the titles dirty all the time. But the third man always gets involved, though. I don't know. I just... How can you make them credible if they're not heels? They're faces. You can't make them credible this way. They're not heels. Maybe Cesaro asked for a rematch next week. Who knows? I know that there's already a title match. Was it Cesaro or Sheamus that got dirty pinned? Cesaro. Okay. If it, it was Sheamus, I could. It, it would because he's a heel. Yeah. It made, but it, the fact that it was Cesaro made no sense. Maybe Cesaro next week asked for a rematch. 
right? But they can't because fucking God. I know that there's already one, but maybe yeah. he asked for one, but he gets denied, and that makes him so pissed that he goes to smack them because after he tweeted and said he was tired of this, and Dana Bryan <laughs> responded to them <laughs> saying... You know, there's a place for you to relax here on SmackDown. I love he said, I'm tired of this. That's what his tweet. Yeah, just, I'm tired of this. Nothing else. I'm tired of this segment, so we're going to move on. <laughs> so, we get this backstage segment with Enzo and Cass and Lana oh, and Rusev. Christ. <laughs> Enzo's locked out of the dressing room. I guess Cass locked him out for some reason. He's got no clothes on. Well, he's not naked. No, he's got like this little yellow... He's got like a thong on. Thong on. But, you know, they have the blur there to make it seem like he's, you know... Um, naked, I guess. He runs into Lana after passing Tyus O'Neal. Fuck Tyus O'Neal. It's like the most relevant. He he was on Raw this week. Was that backstage segment and like the Shining Stars, whatever. Um, he runs into Lana, and Lana's like you know looking down and looking up and he's like, how you doing? <laughs> she smells what Enzo's cooking. Yeah. Oh God, Rusev gets there. He gets pissed off. This ends up leading into a match. Because Rusev is pissed that Enzo's walking around naked. And sure. looking at his wife or whatever. Wow. This just, I don't know. This was so corny. I'm like, oh, okay. It was funny. Like, I was laughing. But then I'm like, my God. Especially they, the way that... This is really happened. what they've come down to, to booking matches. And, like, why are Enzo and Cass all of a sudden feuding with Rusev? Why isn't Rusev facing Roman Reigns? What happened to that feud? That just gone. We're just made to forget. Again, more shit we're just made to forget instantly. No! I don't forget that would be... I'm a smart fan. I know what the fuck you're doing. Kevin Dunn, you're a fucking retard. If you think that we're going to forget about that, you're just nuts. And Rusev, where was he on Sunday? Why I don't even know. Not even on the card. I don't know. It just felt like a complete waste of space. The worst was the match. because it, w- it, it was squash! Like, under a minute. It was squash! I think, are they resorting to Enzo being just... Why? Shocker? What happened to Enzo and Cass? What happened to the end zone cast of NXT who were gold hungry? They always went for the titles. They were like, they were like Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano right now. What happened to that team? And They've, they come up to the main roster and they get dulled down to this fucking garbage. And they're not uh, even they wrestling had, in tag team matches. When did, they, what, did they ever have a title match yet? No. Why the fuck did I? Why not? <laughs> Why? Why do you consistently put the club? Against the New Day every fucking time. Or Cesaro and Sheamus against the New Day every goddamn week. And uh, as much as I don't want to see it, I can see Vince wanting to fucking turn Cass on Enzo. And then have Cass have like a heel singles run. Which is going to be the worst thing for the both of them. Why is it? Because why don't they just run with the tag team? I don't know. They, uh, I hope they're saving Enzo and Cass's title win for like Royal Rumble. Or maybe WrestleMania. But right now, you got to do something better than this crap. This is just terrible booking and garbage. Kevin Dunn thinking it's fucking 10 out of the 10 great shit because it's just pure garbage. And it's also bad because Raw's running out of tag teams. They're literally doing revival. the same match. Over they got to come up. They got to come up. The, the Raw needs the revival big time. Because SmackDown's tag teams are fine. You don't need to touch that. We haven't even had a title match yet with yeah. Slater and Rhino yeah. we keep seeing the same fucking match it, it's like a three week process we get the New Day versus the club then Cesaro and Sheamus and then like the club faces Enzo and Cass and then yeah. it's just a fucking circle through. that goes all around 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 <laughs> the, the, the brand split was a good idea but they're not doing good with the brand split they're not doing the smart things with the brand split they need more tag teams yeah I mean you can bring up the revival that's one you can bring up the Authors of Pain, man. Just bring them up. Like, who cares? You don't need them down. I think NXT's tag team division can take a hit because they the can. main show tag teams need someone right now. And they've got, they've got like, five credible teams down there. Yeah. And they've got TM61, too. Yeah. Maybe even they get called up, yeah. you know? It can take a hit to sacrifice for the better of the main roster right now. Because Raw's tag team division yeah. it really needs well, The NXT's spark. one show a week. They have one takeover two months. They can take a hit. And Raw's three fucking hours. They yeah. need more talent. Yeah. So, one thing is, why isn't Rusev facing anyone or feuding with anyone? It's like, they again, they forgot about Roman Reigns. Heaven forbid he feuds with Braun Strowman, that Braun Strowman actually gets a test now. They're both healed. But they get fucking just feed squashing. Squash on a plate for fucking Braun Strowman. That does not make him look big or strong or dominant. It just makes him look like, uh, I'm just, I'm not impressed by Braun Strowman. I don't care. Because I haven't seen him doing anything test worthy yet. Nothing that makes you believe that. Yeah. And speaking of that, we'll talk about it right now. Sami Zayn gets fed to Braun Strowman. Poor Sami Zayn. 
Honestly, it was literally like the most uncomfortable ten minutes I've ever watched. Stephanie fully say that they, this is punishment for him losing his Survivor Series, even though it doesn't make any sense. He didn't lose at Survivor Series. He got screwed. It was Maurice the Toronto the screw job. Maurice rang the bell. And cost him the icy title. Well, he didn't even have it, but he cost him the chance of getting it and bringing it over the Raw. How is that punishment? Why punish a guy that gets screwed? But then Seth Rollins loses the match because he's more concerned about reuniting with the Shield, but you give him a title match. This is why Raw just doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> and it surprisingly won this week. So Strowman beats the fuck out of Zayn to the point where Mick Foley comes out and stops the match. And Mick Foley's like sad and like, shit, just stop, just stop. Like, why are you sad, Mick Foley? This is your fucking fault. You're the one that made the match. Why do you didn't have to make the match? Fuck Stephanie. Go against her. <laughs> why are you trying to impress this bitch? She's just getting cringeworthy every goddamn And week. now she's burying Sami Zayn to the point of him Zane getting Zayn and Cesaro just need to get the fuck over to SmackDown as fast as they can. This needs to happen quick or else people are going to lose interest in these two. Not This does not have nothing to do with storyline anymore. This has to do with the fact that people are going to lose talent. interest in those pieces of talent if you just keep burying them. It's going to become like fucking Dolph Ziggler. Who would you move over to Raw then? Miz? Paul Cruz, he's not doing anything right now. Why not? Or Dan Bryan get pissed at Baron Corbin and Baron Corbin will go over to Raw. It looks like it's going to be Baron Corbin and The Miz for Cesaro and Sami Zayn. That's probably what's going to happen. Something needs to happen. Yeah, it needs to happen quick. Sami Zayn getting fed the Braun Strowman yeah. just does not make sense. So we'll talk about a highlight of Raw. Pun intended, the highlight reel oh my with God. Chris Jericho and Owens. One of the best parts of Raw. We, this right here from the start of the segment to the end was pure gold. And shit like this needs to happen on a daily or a Raleigh basis, if I could put it that way. And everyone thought this was going to be the breakup. Yeah, because Jericho was pissed off backstage uh, about the list being busted open and saying he's going to expose why Team Raw lost at Survivor Series. And Owens got um, disqualified for smashing the whoever list. it was in the back with the list. Rollins. No, Styles. Styles. Yeah. Owens comes out to save Jericho from for the hassle of revealing it and saying Kevin Owens will reveal it on the Jerichon five thousand. Jericho corrects him and says it's sixty five hundred. <laughs> he he upgraded. <laughs> he upgraded. Owens shows Y two J that uh, it was him saving Jericho from a Styles clash by using the list and busted over AJ yeah, Styles. Like, I sacrificed myself for you. Yeah. <laughs> they get angry at each other. They start teasing the breakup and both saying, like, you know what? You know who's to blame? You know what? we I know who's to blame. But at first, the, they said, uh, you yeah. know, maybe I never had a best friend after oh, all. Oh, yeah. They're like, Ooh. Again, yeah, teasing that they're going to break up and not be friends and anymore. Like, Owens, like, gra- like, Jericho turns around, like, Owens, like, grabs him back, turns yeah. him back yeah. around. You know what? We know who to blame for this. Roman Reigns! They but- both say it at the same time. <laughs> Coordinated perfectly. Oh, my God. And the crowd pop because that Toronto crowd in, hated Roman Reigns. In unison. Because they, they, oh, they're two man. Canadians, and then they hugged after. And, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it was just great, and <laughs> yeah, they blamed Roman Reigns, and they're like, "You think we're really gonna break up, huh?" <laughs> He's my best friend. Damn it. <laughs> the Rollins ends up coming out, and like, oh yeah, of course, here comes Rollins. Um, demands a title shot from Kevin Owens. Now, uh, they end up brawling with each other, and. For sure, Who, who's going to come save Rollins? Out comes Roman. Getting booed. To a huge ovation of boos. Then Foley comes out and books the main event with Rollins. Again, Rollins getting a title shot for some reason against Kevin Owens in an ODQ match with Jericho and Roman banned from ringside. And I'm like, okay, see? Right here is what should be happening on Raw every goddamn week instead you give us the two and a half hour of bull crap until the last half hour of the show but it doesn't even the, the stipulation didn't even matter because it happened yeah well i just i, I will get into that when we talk about that first let's talk about the women's division of raw my god we get the same stale bullshit every goddamn week i don't know what they're doing they added some spice this week with nia Jax, but whatever charlotte came out uh to address survivor series then she gets interrupted by sasha banks uh, she demands her official rematch because she does. You know what? I, she's not a lot. She's not wrong. Sasha Banks lost the title at Hell in Cell. That means she gets a rematch. Um, 
Charlotte agrees, but not tonight, you know, teases. And then she's like, it'll happen next week in her hometown with Charlotte. She got to beat you in your hometown. I'm going to beat you in my hometown. And they did nothing to go off the Bailey attack. Yeah, nothing. Zero. They didn't even mention it fucking once. And then out comes Night. And like, out, Night Jack comes out. And I'm like, again, so they forgot about fucking Bailey. But Night Jack comes out. I'm like, what the fuck does she have to do with anything here? She says she's not done with Sasha. What do you mean not done with Sasha? When was there anything with <laughs> Sasha? When was she feuding with her? When when on Raw? Please point out, Naya. When did you have a problem with Sasha Banks? When? <laughs> when where was this feud? This invisible feud that I don't fucking know about. So they're just giving us a feud out of nowhere now. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my God. I had to fucking... I, I don't know what to say about that. Whatever. Nia Jax comes out. She's not done with Sasha. She says, I'm I'm the only boss around here. And, <laughs> and having Sasha How did you look feel up, about that? <laughs> having Sasha look up at Nia, I'm just like, holy fuck, she's going to get squashed. Like, we saw how bad Nia Jax can oh destroy God. people. She's like running into a Greyhound bus. <laughs> like, literally just like flop. Uh, like, that's it. It's crazy. And then, of course, Bailey interrupts. And yeah. She got a huge pop, Bailey. The whole hugger <laughs> section was in full effect. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, uh, she got Sasha got attacked by Nia Jax, and Charlotte was helping with the chops. Dana Brooke was in there for some fucking reason. Just being a little cheerleading. Oh yeah, yeah, Dana Botch. The one part, the 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 one uh, caption was like Sasha and Nia looking at each other, and then like Dana was like behind them, like doing like some weird (laughs) shit. What the fuck? And then Sasha retweeted, she's like, "God, she's a mess." (laughs) It was fantastic. (laughs) It was like the best tweet I've seen of the week. God. Um. So Bailey comes out again, huge pop. Uh, this leads to a tag team match. So Bailey and Sasha versus uh, Nia Jax and Charlotte. Um, good because I don't want to see fucking Dana Botch anywhere near Bailey. Um, <laughs> Sasha way, ends up winning this match. What happened? Where's Alicia Fox? She just out she of didn't now. die again. Okay, because we know she's alive. We saw her Survivor Series. I saw her in person. But again, they just fucking forget about her. Like poor Alicia Fox, man. I know she's trying so hard. To get like spot to get to get noticed and you know do her part. She's a good wrestler. I'm not gonna but lie. The, 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 the last she gets fucking... overshadowed on Raw because they only focus on three fucking people, and they don't give her like a chance to move up the rankings. Yeah. But even that, like the last time they gave her the mic though, that was pretty fucking bad. Yeah. But <laughs> with the whole promo, whatever. <laughs> so Sasha won with the bank statement. Yeah, in Toronto. Of course, I'm not there. Yeah. Great. Uh, so Sasha will face Charlotte next week for the women's title on Raw in Charlotte. Mm, I'm telling you here. You're it won't happen. It's not, not going to win. She's not, not winning. winning. No. I- uh, I'm not getting my hopes up. I think maybe Bailey tries to screw over Charlotte. It doesn't work. It screws over Sasha and Sasha by accident. And Sasha wins. Maybe Dana Brooke comes out and helps. Bailey's going to have some sort of effect in here. Or maybe... Maybe Nia I can see Jax. this out Nia Jax screwing Sasha over. Doesn't yeah, maybe she just comes and just attacks her. Yeah. Leading um, to their But I'm so lost at this fucking division. I just I have no idea what the fuck's Raw's going on. Raw's division's terrible. Like I can see everything happening on SmackDown's division. Everything makes sense there. Raw's I have no idea what the fuck's happening. I really hope next week that this is the end of the Sasha and Charlotte feud, which I think you're right. It'll, it'll lead to Charlotte with something else, maybe with Bailey. Um, Sasha Banks and Nia Jax. I mean, I love this feud, but mm-hmm. it, it's it's ran its course now. Yeah. It's done. Uh, it just feels way too overdone. The, they, and they, the fact that they kept going back yeah. and forth with the there's no hype title. next week for. It. I don't. I'm not as hype as I was for the other title matches. I'm not hyped for this match at all. And you're a Sasha fan. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that there's potential in Nia Jax, though. The fucking girl is a beast. We saw what happened at Survivor Series. We saw what she can do. <laughs> She's a fucking nut, man. <laughs> I don't think there's any going to be, like, can you, who, who's going to be the person to take down Nia Jax? Sasha? I mean, that could be a good build for her. Yeah, but. <laughs> we know what happened. We've seen the feud in NXT. Like, she's, it, it's Ryan's, tough. It's Alicia Fox. <laughs> <laughs> God, could you imagine? That would Summer be, Rae, wherever the fuck she is. Because she's, she's still on from the injury. roster. Paige. She's she an injury. Paige. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah, update on that. Paige, um, we know. We Del Rio had a recent interview with something or someone early, uh, earlier this week, and he says Paige's goal is to recover from the secondary and stay with WWE. So thank Christ that I got that from Del Rio. If I got that from Paige, I still wouldn't believe it. I'd be like, fuck no, Del Rio's going to put her on a leash and not take her She's anywhere. so wishy-washy, it's unbelievable. No, fucking Del Rio wants her to go back. And I'm like, yes, okay? I've gained some more respect for Del Rio, okay? See, he's a good I, influence after, that, after all, yeah. you know what I mean? 
And I'm happy my girl's coming back. I can't wait for her to come back. Probably won't be till after Mania. Though. Yeah, no, she's she's got a six to eight months recovery for that neck injury. That's insane. But you know she's having fun in the process. She's not a neck brace. She's enjoying life. Her Del Rio just opened a restaurant, so like they're they're happy down there. I've seen all the snap stories. Yeah. She's just and like I said before. Hopefully she comes back rejuvenated. Yeah, like she because she was just done by the end of her mm. run last time. So maybe this was the best thing for her. I hope so. I hope so. So I'll move on. God, the club faces. Okay, later in the show, so we have a title match for the tie team titles. Down later in the show, we get a number one contenders match with the club. Yeah, so I guess what did Sheamus- Golden Truth do <laughs> to get a number one contender match? What the fuck? <laughs> Why didn't like Cesaro and Sheamus get a second chance? Heaven forbid they got a second chance because they got screwed over. <laughs> And why didn't Mick Foley and, and Stephanie say, okay, you know what? You guys get a second chance, but you have to beat the club tonight. Why didn't that match happen? <laughs> Where the fuck did we get Golden Truth versus the club? I'm like, this is the most obvious fucking match I've ever seen on paper. Golden Truth wasn't even in the five-on-five tag team match. No, what the fuck? Why did they get... Oh, my God. <laughs> I would have been fine with the Shining Stars because at least they were there. But no, the Golden Truth, the, who were who weren't even relevant in Survivor Series, get a get an automatic number one contenders and match. They had, and almost win. Okay, I thought they had their timeshare that they traded for their spot. Where uh, they? Yeah, that too. But still, winners would have fa- are, are going to face a new day for next week. So the club wins. I wonder who won. Club wins. Shocker. <laughs> club won. So we get the club versus New Day again. So so are they just going to bury the club again? What if the club, I mean, the club have done stuff to win their title, to get this title shot. They've know, done but stuff. but the, they always get their title shot and then just get buried. It sucks. And, and people can disagree with that because Carl Anderson's been pinned 90% of the time in the singles matches. They've, well, they, they've Darby has looks, buried the club. The, Luke Gallo still looks strong, though. He doesn't. He got look. Halloween squashed. That Halloween match, he got fucking, he was bobbing apples. And he got a Halloween pumpkin put on top of his fucking head. <laughs> And that's how we lost the match. <laughs> yeah. What a way to take credibility off a fucking dominant team from New Japan. This is WWE saying, fuck New Japan. Fuck the fucking Bullet Club. We're going to make you guys look like dickheads. That's why they're on the list for Barry of the Year for yeah. that one award. It's just, I just hope. You know what? As much as I want the New Day to be the longest reigning tag team champions, if the club, the club win next week, I'm going to be all for it. I'm like, thank the fucking Lord the club are now relevant. They are the tag team champions. Like, we keep saying, week in and week out, like a broken record. Why don't they have a third member or a manager? <sighs> I don't know. It's like Styles needs to be on Raw. Or they need to go to SmackDown and get yeah. traded for another tag team. <sighs> maybe, if I had to pick that. Maybe they get traded for... Vaudevillains. <laughs> Vaudevillains are fucking useless on SmackDown right now. They're useless. We'll get into them on SmackDown. Already Ascension. Why not? Golden Truth. Good, good match by Golden Truth. No, I'm going to move on. So getting to the main event, no DQ match, Owens Rollins for the title. It actually was an unreal match. This is one of the the other best parts and of Raw. Toronto got another good match. Yeah, lots of weapons used this match. Fucking two tables were used, chairs. Not even that. Like the they went out shebang. into the crowd. Yeah, there's that big outside dive spot by Rollins. They did it in the tunnel. That was fucking nuts. Jumped off the tunnel. Yeah, and that was risky too. This fucking leg injury. I'm like, oh my god, Rollins, what are you doing, man? Yep. Jericho, out of Band nowhere, from ringside. Okay. This is the f- this is the most ironic thing I've ever fucking seen in the entire world. I don't know if they did world. it on purpose. Because or... okay, so for one, Jericho's wearing a Nakamura sweater, which he's had Twitter beef with, like real Twitter beef with in the past. Two, he has a Nakamura or Nakamura a uh, Sin Cara mask, who we know he's had backstage beef with recently. So he's wearing both of those. <laughs> and attacks Rollins, and Rollins rips the mask off, and it's Chris Jericho goes into ringside and attacks Seth Rollins. Kevin Owens picks him up, power bottles the apron, brings him into the ring, one, two, three. Why doesn't Foley come out here and say you were banned from ringside? Yeah. What the fuck is this? What's the point of banning somebody if you're not going to rap from, uh, app, whatever the fucking word is? I, can't I, think I don't it. understand. I That's don't understand them. this. This match was 100% five out of five for me up until that point. Like, why doesn't Owens get punished by having, by having Jericho come out? I think this, the spot would have been better if after the tunnel spot, Jericho ran out of uh, that tunnel, attacked Seth Rollins really quickly, and, and somehow in the attack, his mask got ripped off, and it shows Jericho. Jericho r- realizes he's been exposed and just runs back into the tunnel. Where was away. Reigns? Why didn't he get involved? <laughs> yeah, where was Roman Reigns? Unbelievable. Reigns. 
whatever. Way to be invisible. Sleeping again, as he was a Survivor Series. Yep. But the match was really good, just the ending did not make sense with yeah. Jericho. So, other than that, Raw this week, for me, got a 6 out of 10. Plain and simple. Six, the 6 points, the 3 for the highlight reel, 3 for the main event. That's it. Plain and simple. They're getting a quarter. Cruiserweight matches were invisible this week. You know, Cedric Alexander won. Yeah, but again... Quick match. Quick-ass fucking match. Didn't make any sense. I got so mad at that. Oh, they yeah. didn't showcase him enough. Oh, yeah, we did see... There was two commercials during that match. We did see a backstage thing with Alicia giving him, like, a good luck kiss. So yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on with that. Whatever. I'm glad my boy Cedric's getting some exposure time, but literally it was, like, a two-minute match. It was terrible. Thank God they're going to 205. That's all I got to say about that. Um, and why the Cruiserweight division didn't go over to SmackDown, I'll have no idea. Because yeah. they're useless on Raw. I'm giving Raw a corporate 5 out of 10. Yeah, because it's good corporate 5. I can appreciate that. So, we're getting into the SmackDown review. And, uh, wow. SmackDown was absolute garbage this week. And because of one man, and one man only. The newest signee. And, guys, you know I don't have a problem with Ellsworth getting signed now. I've realized that what he's done in his past career and what he's done to get to this point. But he needs to fucking stay away from the world title. Okay? This is getting ridiculous now. So, we got to... The most terrible opening of SmackDown I've ever seen. Okay, one, we get Shane McMahon. Thank God he's all right. Uh, he's walking slow, though. He's still banged he's up. He's walking gingerly. He's yeah. playing it well. But this is getting too fucking overkill now, okay? The whole James Ellsworth thing. Why must they continue to put Ellsworth in the title fucking picture? So Shane says you're going to get a contract. Or Ambrose spoils it and says you're going to get a contract. And then Shane announces he will. And then he says... Styles comes out and says, uh, why, why why does he get a contract, Shane? Like, what do you think? Like, come to your senses. Yeah. What has this guy done? And then Ellsworth says, you know what? I want to, we're going to have a ladder match tonight for your contract. Not, I want all or nothing. So I want the contract and a t- world title shot if I win this ladder match. Fucking so stupid. Why do they have to add the stipulation of the world Actually, title? Styles said, if you get that contract, I'll give you a world title match. But we already saw that once. Why does he get another one? I'm sick and fucking tired of this shit. Why does Ellsworth always have to be put in the fucking title picture? Like, is he that much of a crutch for the Ambrose and Styles feud that he has yeah. to be there all the time? I don't understand. Like, I'm happy, guys. He's getting a contract. But seriously... Get him out of there. Get him out of there. And thank God Shane's okay. <laughs> I'll add that. Thank Christ, man. That spot was bad. I went and looked at it again. That spot was bad. Styles just doing great heel work on the mic again. Yeah. And it looks like it's still going on with the feud between AJ and Dean. Looks like that's leading to TLC, which we do know and, now. Yeah. It's and, gonna be a Shane, TLC. Shane's pissed off at Ambrose for turning on his team. Yeah. And he's basically tries to says you need to get out of the building. I mean, they don't really have a, t- a lot of time to book TLC. It's in two fucking weeks for Christ's sakes. We're gonna be doing our fucking review for it or predictions for it next week. <laughs> SmackDown gets screwed over again. Just like Backlash was like two weeks after SummerSlam. Yep. I just, I don't know. We'll move on. So we had an Intercontinental Championship match on SmackDown. The Miz versus Kalisto because backstage Kalisto No, the Miz screw- and Daniel Bryan got yeah. into it. Daniel Bryan told the Miz that Kalisto got screwed over his Cruiserweight title so he deserves an IC title match. What? What, <laughs> what is one person? No. What? That's like saying... Roman Reigns got screwed in his U.S. title match, but he deserves a world title match. No. No. That, uh, you're, this looks like Raw 2.0. Whatever. Miz and Kalisto have an icy title match. Kalisto getting two title shots for the same in the same week, basically. That makes sense. Kalisto. Two different titles in the same week. All it was right. a quick match because you get the Corbin interference, obviously. We get my, uh, I think this is my blissed off moment of the week with the fucking cameraman. Oh. <laughs> literally yeah. the biggest botch I've ever seen by a camera it man. shows Ka- Kalisto's the crowd looking up, Kalisto's looking at the, into the crowd like he sees somebody and then the, the camera peels out to the crowd and there's no one there and then all of a sudden they turn back and Corbin's on yeah, the apron because he missed him Corbin already ran by and the camera's already turned around <laughs> and Corbin's just on the apron <laughs> cameraman oh man you're great bud <laughs> you're gonna get fired that that was horrible. And then Corbin gets in and gives the end of days to Kalisto. Yeah. And Still got beef with Kalisto. Not sure why, but whatever. This feud looks like it's continuing. We know now 
going off talking smack that it's going into a chairs match. Um, Great. Miz retains. He gets super kicked by Dolph on the stage. It looks like Miz and Dolph are not done yet. Um, so whatever. Maybe Miz, Dolph gets, gets another title the, shot. The who best knows? was at first, you're like, who the fuck is that? You're like, is that Gregory Helms? Because <laughs> he had a bandana on. And it really quickly, because of the shadow, it looked like he had the, the chin beard. So like, I thought it was Gregory Helms. Like, what the fuck are you doing out here? One thing <laughs> is that I, I think, thank God, we've seen the end of the Spirit Squad. Oh my god, yeah, we didn't see him this week. Thank fucking Christ. Or the headbangers. Or the headbangers, yes. Headbanger free Tuesdays. Oh yeah. <laughs> Love it. Going into the tag team. Tag team turmoil. Speaking of tag teams. God, this could have been such a good they could have made this like a half an hour, forty five minute, like good match. No. No. But then we don't. Winners get number one contender spot. Well, the most of the match happened in the final two, which is the Usos and the American Alpha. They had like a commercial break during Yeah. Oh. So the match starts out with ascension in the ring. <laughs> they don't even get their entrance. No, I don't even want to know if I want to talk about like the first parts of it was just bad. It was terrible win after terrible win. Nothing happened until American Alpha and Usos were out there. That was when the bulk and the best parts of the match happened. The Usos and American Alpha actually put on a good match for what we got, God, minus like, the commercial breaks. They had they had a chance. The two hour show. They have more commercial breaks than Raw. They had a chance here to showcase these tag teams and like deep good matches, and yeah. they just didn't do it. So American Alpha won. Surprisingly, I was fucking shocked because I thought for sure the Usos were going to win but this match. But it makes match. sense afterwards what happened. Yeah, because but. why it's interrupt and say the turmoil is not done next week. They are going to face the Wyatts, American Alpha, and put a great. So they get fucked over, American Alva. They won the Titan Turmo, but now have to face the Wyatts. And we know what's going to happen now. The Wyatts are going to win next week, 100%. I'm, I'm looking forward to the Wyatts and American Alpha. And I think the Wyatts, the Wyatts does, like, especially Bray, deserves a title. I don't yeah. care what title it is. Okay. As long as it's not Luke title. Harper, I hope that if they win the t- tag titles, Bray Wyatt's in the match. It's going to be Bray and Randy. I hope so. I mean, like for the title match. Yeah, well, I hope so. But like, they're two main event guys going for the, going for the tag titles. So. Yeah, I mean, I can handle that. And like, Rhino and Slater's run is coming to an end. They're going to yeah. lose the title. <laughs> yeah, and I guarantee you, East Slater will still and, stay over after. Oh, he, yeah. he doesn't need the titles. Rhino will probably feud after. Yeah, maybe. But um, I, I like the Wyatts looking good. It's about time that they yeah, actually made them look F- like that. Finally, cre- they need. How a, many times have we been asking for that? They need a credible faction on SmackDown. You know what I mean? To like run the show. I think the Wyatts can do that, especially with Rand out. Yeah. It still looks out of place, but, I mean, I like it. I agree. So, move on. <laughs> Natalia faced Becky Lynch. Oh, my God. First, the it. fucking backstage segment. <laughs> oh, God. With Becky and Natty was, like, just... It, it was like... I wanted to drink bleach while I was watching this. Yeah, it was bad. And then... Natty... Natty, where their oh. continuous movie quotes, or her movie song quotes. Oh, my God. This one was from the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> the best was Alexa's reaction. She's like, oh, okay, I'm done. I'm out of here. Like, she just like, <laughs> left. So we do know that Becky Lynch will face Alexa Bliss for oh, the Women's Championship at TLC. Um, I would have loved that to be a TLC match. May- they might still make a stipulation yeah, for it. I hope so. And, I don't know, Be- Becky's promos just aren't yeah. good right now. Like, heaven forbid it's a TLC match. <laughs> so Natalia versus Becky Lynch happened. Mm. Um, it was an okay match. Alexa was on. All I was concerned about was Alexa on yeah. commentary. To be honest, yeah. I wasn't even watching the match. And uh, Becky won, right? I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's how irrelevant that match was. Sadly, because we always talk about how good women's division was, and it was actually. I didn't even care about the match. Like, like was, I just cared about afterwards when Alexa. We got a Becky. boring match. Like they did, they should have done better. This is what sucked about their women's division this week. This was terrible. No, and the fact that they only match. had a backstage segment with. Carmella and Nikki that was basically nothing they basically said that they're having a match at TLC yeah like why didn't they fucking attack each other or something something they've been doing in the last couple of weeks it just like what the fuck did I just watch it was like a Raw promo like Smackdown was, was Raw 2.0 it was like they were talking to each other co- like civilly backstage I don't, fuck, of, I don't get that what, like they've been attacking each other for how many weeks and now the backstage are, they're fine now that was just it was stupid but I, I hated it I, I did just, I did love at the end when Alexa attacked Becky after the match and looked strong yeah sure what do you mean well, sure that's good no that's but the, like the match sucked we didn't get any good wrestling we got a that we got one thing to happen in the women's division that was relevant this this Smackdown usually they incorporate everybody it just sucked 
Yeah, there was no fallout from Carmella and Nikki. It was stupid. And move on to this dumpster fire match. Baron Corbin gets fed to Kane for some fucking reason. You like, call the two. You're like, uh, Baron Corbin's going to be put in a match with Kane by Daniel Bryan. I call it. And yeah, then, and it happened. <laughs> it happened. Punishment. Ooh, fucking punishment. He's wow. punishing it's, us by having to watch that. Yeah, you're, you're actually punishing the fans there, Daniel Bryan. You're punishing us viewing this trash match. Kane, I don't know why the fuck Kane's still on TV anymore. He needs to get off TV. Like it's just seeing him at the Survivor Series too was just like what the he, fuck. He am won I watching? against Luke Harper. Oh Why my is God. he winning matches? Oh, I don't know. Of course, Kalisto interferes. I'm like, oh yeah, like this was not going to happen. Um, it looks like their feud is going to continue. Great. Like the feud doesn't even make sense. Like the fact that Corbin and, and Kalisto are feuding, it just doesn't look no. right. No. Like, Kalisto would get squashed by Corbin. It's awkward, and it's just fucking terrible. Another garbage thing for SmackDown this week. And it sucks because Baron Corbin's my dude, and I hate him feuding with Kalisto right now. It doesn't make any sense. Zero sense. That's it. Zero. And we end off SmackDown with a contract ladder match. This was the worst ladder match I've ever seen in history. Like, <laughs> worse than the WLC match. Hang on. That was exciting. Be- before this... We- was garbage. Before we get into the main event, can we please talk about Ambrose tonight? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, that was maybe a, a .5 of a highlight for SmackDown this week. Okay, he kept... Because Shane kept kicking him out of the building, and he kept coming back in all the backstage segments, and Shane was just losing his yeah. mind. Like, he came back one time with pizza. Yeah. It looked like the worst pizza <laughs> It started out seen. in the ring, because, like, Shane told him to go to the back, and after the beginning segment... And Dean Arrows just appeared in the ring. Like, where the fuck did he come from? He came back. Yeah. yeah he came back in the segment. Then, like, let him out the doors. And then came Comes back, back with, with a box of pizza. He's like, you want to take one for the road? That was gross-looking pizza. <laughs> it looked like it sat there for, like, it, eight it hours. It was disgusting. <laughs> that wasn't even, like... He didn't even go out to get pizza. That's, like, the cafeteria pizza they were serving there and just put up in it a was, circle. It looked, like, ten years old. Like, that... You people watching that, that is not... That was good gross. representation of Canadian pizza. That was we have disgusting. way better. We have way better pizza than that. Okay? That looked like a pile of shit, and someone just melted cheese over top of it. It was disgusting. So then Ambrose comes back the third time, <laughs> in the ma- dressed as a fucking Mountie. Oh god! And then this is this time Shane's like losing his mind. He's like, I'm I'm tired of this. I don't want to see you again. You're being subordinate. Uh, like yeah, and tells Daniel Bryan take care of it. And, Dale and like, Shane's like, you know what? I'm leaving for the night. I'm out of here. So Shane leaves because he's tired of. of <laughs> yeah. What did Ambrose say? He said something about no, because Daniel Bryan's like, he's like, why, why the Mountie? <laughs> hey, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Ambrose leaves on Daniel Bryan and goes, the one thing about the Mountie, Daniel is. The Mountie always gets his man. Going off the Mountie. <laughs> Quoting the Quebecers, the a great Quebecers. French tag team back in the day. Oh my my lord. <laughs> so then, lastly, he interferes in the in the main event match. He comes out with an Ottawa oh. Senators jersey on and a goalie mask. And the goalie mask rips it off. Oh my god. So he's pl- fucking playing garbage. to the Ottawa Senators crowd wearing a Senators jersey. It just sounds like a really bad bump off the ropes, too, that land on the outside. I'm like, oh my god. Like, why? Why does he need to be taking these bumps against fucking James Ellsworth? <laughs> it wasn't even Ellsworth doing it. It's fucking garbage. And he gets stuck in the ropes. I'm like, oh my god, not this fucking spot. Ellsworth climbs up, gets the fucking contract. Wow, yay, shocker. Beats AJ Styles again and gets a title shot. I would have just been fine with it being the contract. Like I could have I could have I could have dealt with that. But the fact that he gets another title match out of it. How the fuck <laughs> do you have James Ellsworth beating Styles for the third fucking time and having- getting another title shot when you fuck over guys like Bray Wyatt, Apollo Crews? Baron Corbin. But no, you give it to this fucking Chince McMahon sloth piece of... I don't even know what the hell he is. Like, what the hell is that? And he had... He was already bandaged up, like, the whole match. Oh, my God. This was just but garbage. The he, worst main event I've ever seen. This guy's had two title matches. And this is why SmackDown this week for me got 4.5 out of 10. The lowest SmackDown score I've ever given it since the brand split. They they need to get rid of this Ellsworth and Raw won this week. For me, Raw won. It wasn't a pretty win. It wasn't a pretty win, but Raw like, won this week. Uh, the, so the first time since the first Raw of the brand split, it's won. Don't think that barely. I'm, don't think that uh, Raw, you know, you won. can get away with that. Yeah, that <laughs> well, was not get, a good win. That, that was. wasn't a good win. That was a mediocre, below average win for Raw. I don't even know how you can call that a win. 
but uh, I'm <laughs> they give- both lost. But SmackDown sucked more than Raw. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving SmackDown a four and Raw gets a five. Yeah, so it's not like Raw had a great score. Yeah, no, those are good scores. Um, Ugh. they they need to start giving people that deserve title matches title matches. Yeah, because SmackDown's a land of opportunity. They always brag about that, but they fucking just repeat and give Ellsworth opportunity after opportunity after what do you opportunity. Think the people backstage feel pissed off that this fucking no chin fucker gets more title shots than Bray Wyatt's ever had in his entire career. Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn, Cesaro, Baron Corbin. He's homegrown. I'm surprised he doesn't get pushed more. Apollo Cruz, it's crazy. I just I don't understand. They need to stop with the Ellsworth thing. They do. Ellsworth needs just needs to stop and needs to go. Plain go, go down to the mid card, face Jack Swagger or something. Else. I wouldn't give a shit. Anyways, last part of the show, in our favorite time because we love the intro music, and that is the WWE headline. That's right, WWE Headlines, the part of the show where we read any important news off in the WWE. Great, I love that intro song. I fucking love it. It's Anyways, perfect 10. we have... Perfect 10. We have. We should just use his theme for the <laughs> intro breaking news. Um, that'd be great. I think I might consider that. We'll think about no, it. No, we can't um, get rid of the breaking news. Anyways, seven topics today in WWE Headlines. We'll start off the Royal Rumble match, rumor match. They share the Royal Rumble. The Undertaker versus AJ Styles for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I like it because it, it elevates Styles. Mm, I, I do to too. Give, to give him that level of competition to face The Undertaker. That'd be great. Um, it's not set in stone though, though, due to Taker's recent hip surgery. They're still working things out, but that's the current planned match for the Royal Rumble. I'd be okay with that. Especially in the Alamo that. Dome, they're going to need a big match to sell, not yep. just the Rumble match. I think that'd be great. Two, Tyson Kidd in the Total Divas drama. He's been pulled from this season of Total Divas by WWE. Kidd told a fan on Twitter that WWE might not explain the situation and did not elaborate any further. Kidd is still suffering or recovering from a neck injury with only a 5% chance of recovery. So I guess they, they want to keep him off yeah. because they, they assume that he's Or maybe there's back. some drama that we don't know. Something. I don't know. But sucks for, for TJ because... Yep. Such a good talent, yep. and he got fucked over. <laughs> the muscle buster. Yeah. Speaking of that, that's the third headline in our news today. NXT live event from Osaka, Japan, in December, December third. Samoa Joe is set to face Nakamura for the NXT title, and that's the first rematch between the two for the title. Is it a live event? It's a live event, and I think Nakamura is going to win it from at the live event. NXT's done that in the past. Uh, I see him getting screwed over in his home. The no. WWE always does that. Nakamura is staying NXT. He's going to win the title here. And this is December. I think this is going to set up for Joe coming up to the main roster soon. But then it's going to be like the same crap as the women's division. Like with just going back and forth with a title every fucking month. Yeah. I don't like that. But Nakamura is going to be staying there. He's going to need the title back soon. He's got, well, It's, a, it's going have, to happen. But then why did they have Joe win it in the first place? I don't know. Surprise factor. But... It brings down the NXT yeah. title when it keeps going back and forth every month. Yeah. Who knows? I don't like that. Next. <laughs> um, 205 Live debuts next Tuesday. Thank God. After SmackDown at 10 p.m. Are they actually going to get some, you know, actually more? I hope so. It's an, hour, it's an hour show. I really hope so. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. Um, nothing, no details yet on where it gets filmed and stuff, so I'm still waiting to see that. Uh, Cruiserweight title match is set for that debut. Rich Swan versus Brian Kendrick. Should be a good match. I think Rishwan might win. I think he might win it. That'd be crazy. That's a good way to debut 205. You can't handle this. (laughs) Rich, can we just talk about Rich Uh, Swan's face on Monday? Oh my god, I sent you that picture. (laughs) His facial expressions are hilarious. He's He's got wings on his trunks now. God. I hope they have the NXT crowd for that 205. They're the best crowd. I hope it's filmed in in Florida. That'd be great. Um, James Ellsworth is now officially a WWE full-time yep. contract. Got his own page member. now on WWE.com. Yep. Uh, he posted on Facebook recently this week that he would not be taking any more indie bookings. It is now official. He's a full-time WWE superstar, has his own WWE.com page. Um, there's no word yet on how long his contract is. Until so they get tired of him. <laughs> a to-be-determined contract. <laughs> 
And number six, Kalisto and Corbin, as I said before in the SmackDown review at TLC, will be a chairs match. It was announced on Talking Smack this week. I actually watched that segment, and then Baron Corbin was laughing. He's like, wow, you're really going to let me have a chairs match he's with this gonna guy. fucking kill Kalisto, he's like, man you better call his family and tell him he's not gonna make it back God, that's so brutal and last but not least a shelton benjamin injury update mm. he still says he'll be with the derby after recovering from injury he says he doesn't plan on going anywhere the doctor says he is four to six months away from recovery. That's crazy. Still yeah. four to six months. Yeah, that must be a bad rotator cuff injury, man. Man, if everyone, he was so hyped for him coming back, too. He would have helped that mid-card so much. Yeah. But I'm glad because now we know that he's still going to be with us once, you know, this is probably going to be after WrestleMania. We're getting Shelton Benjamin still with Can SmackDown. Can you imagine Shelton Benjamin versus Dolph Ziggler? God, that'd be a great match. I hope we see that when he comes back. Yeah. Other than that, guys. I think that's going to wrap it up. I don't think I have anything else. Nope, 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 nope. Make sure you're playing the right theme this time. (laughs) I played Luke Gallows last week. I got the D'Lo Brown one set here. So that's going to wrap it up, ladies and gentlemen, for week number 33 of the Lowdown Show, Brand Wars on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We're your Canadian-based RB podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown from the past week. Also during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment called Luke Gallows Polls, hosted by our very own Corporate Cappy. And there will be headlines where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Remember, every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted right here live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And if you'd like to join on our conversation, have your thoughts, questions that are only three questions discussed on the podcast, tweet us in the whole bar, WP or drop a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, as always. And I'm o- always joined by my co-host, Mr. Corporate himself. The Blissful Boss, Corporate Cappy. Don't bliss me off. And we're always here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. So yeah, but what you gonna do? You're looking at the real deal now. Gonna kick your sorry ass out on the street.